is the last DPS. I saved it for last. It's actually going to be Echo. Ash survives. Echo's gone. Trace is gone. And Arissa Moira are also out of the pool. Oh! Oh, my poor heart. All of that, all of that echo we just saw, all of that excitement. I'm like, what's this going to look like? How is this going to... Ah, oh, all of these great things. <laughs> oh, dearie me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Matt, I think I agree with you there. So, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. Um, You guys know this new hero uh, it, it, called Echo. The latest thing in Overwatch with new heroes being, you know, the thing which attracts most people back to Overwatch. Wouldn't it be a good idea if you were to ban that hero from play after only a week of it being on the live service. No, probably not. Well, this is what we've got, ladies and gentlemen. So this here is the Echo Showdown tournament, which was a fantastic tournament. And I'll show you guys some more details on that in a second. Awesome community tournament. And then an hour later, Hero Pool reveal of the week. Yeah, and then Echo gets banned. So Blizzard built all of this hype with this brand new Hero launch, all of the marketing that goes with that, all of the awesome stuff with flash ops, and then they ban the Hero. <laughs> and it's like, uh, excuse me, what? So this is the Flash Ops thing. Now, this is really, really, really cool. So the details of this are, it's an Echo tournament. Now, this was designed to show Echo a high-level play. Now, these are professional Overwatch League players, really good streamers. Like, loads of cool people were involved in this competition. And it was broken down into EU and NA. And both regions had 25k in prize money. So this was actually really cool. And they did show the North American finals on the Overwatch League channel. Bit of a shame they didn't show the EU finals, but whatever. They showed the NA one. Okay, fine, great. And then at the end of this tournament, the very tournament designed to showcase Echo, they then go and ban Echo. And it just, it beggars belief. It's like, what is going on here? This is crazy. But there's a lot of stuff going on, guys, right? And we're going to explain all of that in this video because there are pros and there are cons to this. But I think we first need to understand the way that Blizzard are actually banning the heroes. But before we get onto that, check this out. So these are the banned heroes. You've got Echo, you've got Tracer, you've got Orisa, and you've got Moira. Now, the big question is, how are these bans allocated? Now, we know that bans on uh, from Overwatch League are applied to competitive for everybody else. So if it's banned at Overwatch League, it's banned for us. This means we won't be able to play these heroes for a week in competitive. And this also creates some other issues with hero cycles. And I'll get onto that in a second. But let's just break down the way this works. So... To determine a week's hero pool, we compile hero play rates from high-level competitive play matches from the preceding two weeks. Heroes with play rates above a certain threshold will be eligible to be removed. The higher their play rate, the more likely they are to be removed. Based on that, one tank, two damage, one support will be randomly removed from play. Note that heroes will not be removed two weeks in a row. Now, the argument here is, okay, yes, Echo's a brand new hero. She's going to be played. So every time a new hero is introduced with this current system, most likely it will get banned the following week, which is really silly. Uh, or you could have just said, hey, Blizzard, why did you just, just you know, just select Ash or somebody else instead of Echo? Mm. Anyway, it goes on to say this. At the end of each Sunday's Overwatch League matches, we'll announce the hero pool that will be used that upcoming week for both live and competitive play and the Overwatch League. That pool will go into effect in the game's Monday morning. This process will occur every week of the Overwatch League regular season. During weeks that there are no Overwatch League matches, the same data will still be used to determine the hero pool and you will find out Monday morning. Right, okay. So I think we need to just go back a little bit here and we need to look at the whole thing of Echo and the way that the current hero ban system, the way it relies on frequency of selected heroes at high level competitive and mix in a bit of overwatch league and all of that good stuff you're almost certainly going to end up banning a new hero when it comes out because everybody wants to play the new hero because new heroes in overwatch are the thing which draws people back to overwatch like there's lots of people out there you play overwatch it's great and then they go away for a few months and they come back to try the new hero they play the new hero maybe they're getting good with a new hero they, uh, maybe i'm talking about myself here i don't know and then that new hero is banned. Now, the crazy thing is, a massive marketing push is done by Blizzard every single time a new hero comes out. I mean, hell, I was kind of part of this. I wasn't paid by Blizzard. I'm never paid by Blizzard to make this kind of content. But they flew me over to Irvine and said, hey, Sty, you want to check out Echo? I'm like, cool, I'll do it. So I do it. That is effectively part of their marketing. So you go out there, you make the video content. That's cool. There's a load of other media out there that were doing different bits and pieces. There's things like the Echo flashpoint tournament which we've just seen all of this good stuff 
which is there to build hype for the hero. And then, that's it. It's gone. <laughs> and it's just, to me, that is just absolutely ridiculous. But let's talk about this idea of hero cycles, because I think this is, um, this is where most likely Blizzard will be pushed into taking some sort of action against the way that they are assigning these hero bans. So I want to take a look at last week's hero bans. Look at this. It's Widowmaker, it's McCree, it's Reinhardt, it's Brig. Now, Widowmaker and McCree being removed the week of Echo's introduction meant that Echo is super powerful because two of her best counters are not in the game. You've still got Soldier 76, you've still got Ash capable of dealing with Echo, but they're not as good as a McCree and they're definitely not as good as a Widowmaker who can just one-tap the Echo out of the sky. And Echo is actually pretty easy to hit when she's flying around in the sky. So then if we go forward and we consider the bands that we've got now, let's just think about the impact this will have on the game and what type of heroes will be played. So Echo gets banned, Tracer gets banned, okay, Arissa gets banned, and Moira gets banned. Now, taking Echo out of the game, taking Arissa out of the game, taking Tracer out of the game, taking Moira out of the game, these cause certain heroes to now be picked more. So we could be going into another week where McCree gets banned again <laughs> because McCree is probably going to have a pretty good time. Soldier's probably going to have a pretty good time. You know, Widow is probably going to have a pretty good time. There's all of these heroes now which are going to have a great week and you could argue that that's the point of the hero ban system because, okay, these heroes get played a lot now and so they won't be played the next week. I think I guess the main issue with the argument I'm trying to put forward here, or it's not r rather the issue with the argument, it's the main point of the argument, is when you've got a brand new hero, which does create a lot of hype, because what I'm trying to do here, guys, is look outside of the box, because I know there's a lot of people that are going to be like, well, Sty, Echo's OP. I, I don't think she's OP. I think she needs some balance changes. I think Echo was just really lucky to go into the game the week two of her best counters were not actually in the game. You know, it would be the same as if Brig gets banned, uh, like much like last week, I guess you could say. With Brig being banned, it means Doomfist is very powerful. Brig and um, McCree not being playable, well, I mean, Doomfist can just go around and do what he likes. But because we had a new hero, people were tending to play the Echo, which then meant you kind of needed a hit scan to counter the Echo. And the only hit scan available was Ash and Soldier. And Ash was getting played a hell of a lot. So it's a bit weird that Ash didn't get banned, although she had a very high chance she would have been banned, but she didn't. She wasn't randomly, randomly selected. Uh, Echo was one of the DPS, uh, along with Tracer, that was randomly selected. Also, Tracer benefited because there was no brick. So you can see what I'm saying here. But what this will do is create certain cycles of heroes. Whereas now, we're going to go into the period of like, okay, the hit scan is back. Echo's not in the game. Then when Echo comes back, does that mean that people are just going to play tons of Echo? And then Echo goes away again. And then her counters go away again. And we're just in this cycle of ban, ban, ban. You know, it, it's just, I don't know. Like, it's really weird to me. And this brings it all the way back to the idea of why don't they just force certain metas each week right it, it, that's kind of what they're trying to do but why don't they just go it's dive week it's not dive week it's reinhardt i don't know uh rush down comp week whatever comp you want to throw in there if that could be a way of doing it would you guys agree like or we just go straight back to the idea of well just keep bans in overwatch league why are bans even in the normal game does it actually sh like change up the normal game enough to make it um I guess, interesting enough. Whereas it's like, oh, the hero's banned. And this is the, the big debate I think we've been having for a while with the hero pool system and the hero ban system that we've got in Overwatch, where if you look at it from a couple of different perspectives, you end up with a viewpoint, I think, that isn't really... Like, if you're an Echo player, or it doesn't even matter if you're an Echo player, if you're any... If you're a Tracer player and Tracer's now banned, you end up being like, well, okay, Tracer's banned. What am I going to do? Well, I think the ideal thought process Blizzard want you to take is, oh, well, actually, I'm going to try a different character now because I can't play the hero I want to play. But is that actually happening? Are people saying, well, no, I want to play my hero, so I'm just not going to play competitive? Only Blizzard know because they've got the data of, you know, how many people are playing the, the modes. And I guess Blizzard would be there in the background saying, well, actually, you can still play all these heroes in all the different game modes. But my point is, this is affecting competitive, you know, and that's like the staple game mode of the game, really. That's where a lot of gaming hours are, are are piled into and we know that because of what jeff showed us recently on the forums with the usage rates uh, or the average hourly playtime of um various game modes and competitive just wins across the board in every single region so here's the thing right i want you guys to be honest in the comments below do you think this is a good system right i know it's funny and it's, it's definitely funny to meme about the fact echo has been 
removed from the game after just literally being launched and Blizzard spending a ton of cash doing a production, doing a show, which, well, shows off Echo and then just going, oh, by the way, she's banned at the end of it. So all the stuff we've watched in this tournament, it now doesn't really apply to us because we can't play her in a competitive environment. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Just let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Like the hero ban system, what changes would you like to see to it? Would you like to see it removed? Would you like to see an actual ban system so you have a pick and ban phase at the start of the game? But, you know, all of these things, just let me know, guys, in the comments below. I think this is a debate we're going to be having for quite a long time uh, with Overwatch. So, yeah. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Doodaloo.